Welcome to Captain Discovery. Did you know that over 1.2 billion balloons are produced worldwide each year? That's right, you didn't misread. This number is even higher than the population of many countries. And to create those adorable balloons you often see floating in the sky, thousands of liters of latex are required. Today, we're embarking on a colorful journey where tiny drops of latex are transformed into vibrant balloons. Yes, today I'm taking you on a tour of a balloon factory. It may sound simple, but this process might just surprise you. Ready to dive in? Let's get started. Subscribe now and join Captain Discovery's journey! The story of balloons didn't start with rubber or latex, but with animal bladders. Sounds odd, right? But it's true. People long ago knew how to use pig or goat bladders, blowing them up to make toys. Imagine being a child in ancient times playing not only with colorful balloons, but with a pig's bladder. It's not exactly thrilling, but that's how balloons began. Then, in 1824, a scientist, Michael Faraday, while experimenting with hydrogen gas, created the first modern balloons from rubber. Can you imagine what Faraday was thinking? He probably didn't expect these balloons to become so popular. A few years later, Thomas Hancock, a rubber manufacturer in England, came up with the idea to commercialize balloons. He started selling DIY balloon kits. Yes, you can make your own balloons right in your living room. But the balloon story doesn't stop there. In the 1930s, latex balloons, the kind we see today were introduced, made from liquid rubber. They were much easier to produce and process than regular rubber. These colorful and durable balloons quickly dominated parties and parades, from birthday celebrations to major events. Today, balloons have gone far beyond their humble beginnings. They're made not just from latex, but also from materials like mylar, and can be filled with helium to float in the air. So, there you have it. From animal bladders to modern balloons floating in the sky, the history of balloons is a long, surprising, and fascinating story. Now let's dive into the balloon production process. First, to create those shiny balloons you see at parties, there's no magic involved, just something a bit… stretchy. That's right, latex, a milky white liquid harvested from rubber trees. Have you ever wondered where those little balloons come from? Definitely not from fairy tales. They begin in tropical forests, where rubber trees carefully release each drop of latex. Who knew something so ordinary could transform into something that brings so much joy? Discovery Challenge Do you prefer classic round balloons or fun-shaped balloons? Tell us why in the comments. Next up, did you know that latex isn't naturally colorful? To create red, blue, or even rainbow balloons, a bit of magic, well, actually a bit of special chemicals is needed. I was taken to an area that looked like a mad scientist lab. Here, they add dyes and other additives to the latex. Can you imagine? Just a bit of color powder and suddenly the whole batch of latex turns a bright, vivid pink. Discovery Challenge If you were designing your balloon, which feature would you focus on first? A. The color B. The shape C, the size, D, the material. Comment your choice below. 
Now it's time to shape them. Have you ever made cookies? If so, the balloon molding process might remind you of dipping cookies in icing. In a large room with hundreds of balloon molds hanging in the air, the dipping process begins. Metal molds, shaped like teardrops or circles, are dipped into colorful latex vats. As they're pulled out, a thin layer of latex clings to the molds, forming the initial shape of the balloon. Seeing those molds hanging in the air reminds me of making cookies with my grandma. But instead of cookies, this time we're making balloons, each with a different shape and size. From small birthday balloons to giant balloons floating in the sky, making kids laugh with delight. After dipping, we need to bake them a bit also known as drying and vulcanizing. If you thought only cookies needed baking, think again. Here the balloons are placed in a drying oven, not an actual cookie oven, of course, where the temperature is carefully controlled to make the balloon strong, elastic, and ready for the next steps. Once the balloons are ready, automated machines carefully remove them from the molds. Next, they go through a thorough washing and drying process. Once dry, another set of machines adds the colorful decorative patterns that make each balloon unique. Seeing how seamlessly each step flows, I couldn't help but exclaim, it's amazing how far technology has come. After all the automated steps are complete, the balloons are handed over to skilled workers for final inspection. Did you ever think balloons went through a quality check? Any balloon with a flaw, whether it's a hole or a misshapen form, won't make it past this stage. After all these meticulous steps, the colorful balloons are ready to be packaged and shipped out. They'll show up at parties, festivals, or even balloon blowing competitions. I left the factory feeling thrilled. Who would have thought that from simple drops of latex, a whole world of colorful fun could be created?
Although balloons bring joy, they can also harm the environment. To reduce this impact, many companies have switched to producing balloons from biodegradable latex, which decomposes more quickly in nature. Releasing balloons outdoors is being restricted to prevent them from endangering wildlife. Instead, people are encouraged to reuse balloons or opt for more eco-friendly alternatives like air-filled balloons or paper lanterns. These measures help protect the environment while still preserving the joy that balloons bring. Thank you for joining us in exploring the production process of balloons. Enjoy exploring factory production with us? Like, share, and subscribe to Captain Discovery for more fascinating insights into manufacturing.